team in the football league. You expect to compete with everybody. Oh. Alright guys, but in all seriousness, the Jets came out flat. 24-3, we just got to play better. You've got to connect on those red zone trips, man. Freaking red zone! Anyway, let's let's turn it over to Jet Central, man. I'm about to lose it here. This game, man. Oh my goodness. So, the Jets, as you guys already know, just lost a heartbreaker against the Chiefs. Um, you know, me, you, everyone watching this video thought it was going to be a much, uh, a lot better of a game. Um, I mean, we couldn't get the run game going because we, we were down early. Fitzpatrick looked horrible, as everyone knows, um, you know, with the six INTs. But, I mean, it wasn't really the six – like, it was the six interceptions. But, you know, if you, if you look throughout the game, it was, he was overthrowing passes. He was uh, – you know, most of his passes were low, like skipping on the ground, behind receivers. I think Decker only had one catch or something like that. It was late in the game. I, it was overall just the offense could not click. Uh, I knew Maul looked good. Robbie Anderson looked good. I think he was in two plays and he had two catches. Exactly. They were both, yeah, they were both nice, both really both nice, uh, nice grabs um, with bad throws. So I, I know Anderson's first catch, it was a horrible throw. It was, it was a uh, Fitz like lofted it up there and he had to like slow down and yeah, kind of adjust the ball. And uh, I mean, he made a nice play on the ball. <clears throat> but um, you know, uh, like I said in my recap video, I don't really blame the defense too much because. You know, we're in their house. It is a playoff caliber team. I don't even think they scored an offensive touchdown. Um, that and, you know, you think about that and you take that into consideration with um, the fact that we had so many turnovers. So those are so many extra possessions. I mean, you, you hear on the media all these people talking about, you know, if you win the turnover battle, you usually win the game. Huh. And that's usually like two, you know, like two or three turnovers is a lot for a game yeah. uh, or for a defense or special teams. But, you know, when you have eight, it's pretty much your guarantee to lose. And that's what happened. And, I mean, overall, it sucked watching. And, I mean, the crazy thing is, too, before I uh, before I end it, um, is we were still in it. You know, late in the fourth quarter, we still had a pretty good chance to win this game. You know, we had all three timeouts. We got down to the red zone. Um, you know, we just couldn't. Fitz just kept throwing uh, red zone picks. And it just, you know, it kept boiling down to turnovers. And just, it is what it is. So, that big sell, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, man, and kind of like you said, like, most of the Chiefs, all the Chiefs' points were off of momentum, you know, momentum swings, off of turnovers. Uh, I think the first one was a, a, a interception, ran back, or some, some point during the game, it was an interception, ran back for a touchdown. There was a fumbled kickoff, ran back for a touchdown. There was another pick that they went down the field and scored a touchdown on, off a freaking drag route from the tight end. Oh, my God. Titans beat us up the whole game. But didn't get me started there. And then a field goal, and then uh, what was their other touchdown? I don't even remember. The, the one off um, Jalen Ramsey's fumble. 
Oh, yeah, Jalen Marshall. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay. yeah, Jalen Marshall, not Jalen Ramsey. <clears throat> Jeez, dude, but, like, you got to go. These mistakes have got to go, man. Like, it's it might be it might be early in the season still, but this is the second year where most of these players, these mistakes have got to stop. I mean, granted, it is a tough situation to play in uh, Kansas City. It's tough to play there for anybody, and it's tough to play for a team that's, you know, Sort of, you know, veterans, you know, not not fast. They're not the youngest guys on the team. So it's tough for them to have to go and play younger, revamped, a tough defense like that, a uh, tough, hostile environment. And like I said in my one of my videos before uh, in the past, Kansas City is the toughest place to play in football. I don't care what people say about Seattle. It's, Seattle's up there, definitely. But I still think Kansas City, because of the way the stadium is built, the sound just goes back and forth and back and forth. All around, the fans are screaming and the anthem and the trumpets and everything. It's hard to play there, man. So the Jets came out. I mean, they, you know, given the fact all those turnovers, dude, it was still like a two touchdown game for like three quarters. That's the sad thing about it. <clears throat> Our defense looked good the whole game, man. I, and a lot of people are knocking them, obviously, because we lose 24 to 3. But like I said, most of those points were off of momentum, you know, from our mistakes on the offensive side of the ball. Or the special teams, you know. So, granted, you know, the Jets have got to pick themselves up and move forward, man. You can't just lay down the dust and say, oh, man, we're just, we're just losers, you know. We can't get any better. This is a learning point. You've got to learn from this. And you've got to take this and move and move forward, man. you got a home game and you got two straight road games. You've got you've got to pick your heads up real quick. What do you think they got to do moving forward? To win, win ball games and to uh, keep their heads high, man. What do you think they got to do? Well, um... Before I get into that, real quick, I just want to mention, too, um, a couple years ago, the New England Patriots were kind of the same situation, you know, veteran team, uh, were feeling down and out, everyone was kind of counting them out, and they lost big time to the Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead Stadium, and I believe they went on to win the Super Bowl, so if you just want exactly. to take that, you know, think about that, I mean, I, it's, wow, you know, I didn't even it's think not about that. it's guaranteed or anything like that, but, you know... I'm just saying that because you know we we're not we're not the only team that has been in this situation. And they were 0 2 after that loss, so everybody's like, "Is Brady Belichick finally over? Yeah. Is it is yeah. it over?" No, they come back stronger than ever. You know, granted, it is a different coach and everything like that, but no, nonetheless, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so you know, I the loss sucked. Don't get me wrong. Fifth sucked. The off, everything about the game just was bad from the get-go um but you know the silver lining of this game is it's early it was it you know imagine imagine if you're like a Dolphins fan right now like struggling against the Browns home opener against Cody Kessler making his first start and in reality the Browns should have won that game you know they bunch of missed field goals and they even had an opportunity in the end of the game to win it but he missed I think he missed three field goals beside the point the point is we lost to a very good team. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm not. That's. I'm not trying to uh, like sugarcoat or anything like right. that. A loss is a loss. We still got you know beat down. Oh yeah. But you know at least it's a it's a at least um, at least it's you know, early. I, I, I can guarantee you Ryan Fitzpatrick will probably not have this bad of a game for the rest of the season. Oh. Um, you know he's not the greatest quarterback. He's not a top ten or maybe even a top fifteen quarterback in my book or in my eyes and. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's pretty safe to say that he will never throw six picks in a, in a game to zero touchdowns in a game for the rest of the season. So that's something uh, that, you know, we can look at. Another thing, too, is um, I think this game was definitely the low point of the season so far. Right. Granted, it's three games, so it's not that much to look off of. But I just don't really think that, that, that the, you know, the New York Jets as a whole, as a team, is going to be – it's going to play. This is their worst game of the season so Obviously. far. I, I really don't see him playing this bad again under Todd Bowles. I mean, he's strict. He's disciplined. You know, I, I really feel like that, the, the, you know, the New York Jets are definitely going the right direction. But oh, yeah. this is definitely the the rock bottom. This is the worst yes. that you can see the New York Jets at with this roster. So, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that, and I'll pass it back over to you. Uh, you know, I mean, you get beat down. In life, not just in football, in life, you get beat down. Uh, whether it's you know on your worst day or it's on your best day, you're gonna take shots along the road, you know. Uh, 
the, the real statement, what defines a person, what defines a football team, is how they respond to this. So I'm going to be looking at that Jets and Seahawks game this Sunday. A lot of people are doubting Seattle. A lot of people are praising Seattle. But let me tell you something. When you've got to make that trip across the country, you've got to go from the West Coast to the East Coast, or the East to the West, it's not easy. It takes a toll on your players having to readjust. You know, like I was saying with the Dolphins and the Jaguar, or not the Dolphins, the Dolphins and... What was it Jackson? Somebody took a long road trip, uh, I think, last week uh, uh, across the country. Uh, it might have been Tampa Bay to Arizona or something like that. No, anyway. it was Jacksonville to Oakland. Jacksonville yeah. to Oakland. There you go. <clears throat> long road trip. It's not easy for anybody to play. Uh, and Seattle is going to be facing an angry coach, an angry defense, and a much more angry offense. And Brandon Marshall should be back to normal. I believe he will be. Uh, he's going to practice a lot more this week. So, look out, man. What do you think? And, I just will say this real quick, not to cut you off, but yeah. a real angry fan base. Oh, my angry God. Angry so, I mean, I expect the fans to be loud, pissed off, and I expect the Jets, you know, to come in hard-hitting and, uh, you know, on top of their game, definitely. Yeah, man, it's it's going to be a time of testing, man. You're going to really see what the Jets can can do here. I mean, you can't lose this game. This is definitely a must win. You know, every game's a must win, and, and I hate jinxing it by saying that, but this is definitely a must win. It's at home. You're coming off two straight road games. You got two straight road games following this game. You know, you can't lose your second home game, dude, and expect to win at Pittsburgh and then at Arizona, man. And it's going to be tough, man. So the Jets have got, they've got to show themselves this weekend. I think they will, man. Uh, we'll do that, we'll do that preview video later in the week. You know, again, I don't want to jinx it or anything like that, so. What's your final thoughts, man? <clears throat> My final thoughts, I mean, you kind of covered it. Just, you know, I'm hoping the Jets will bounce back. I feel like the Jets are going to bounce back. Um, you know, we're at home, which is good. Um, you know, like you said, the team's going to be pissed. The coaches are pissed. The fans are pissed. I expect it to be hostile. I, I don't know what time the game is. One o'clock. it's a 1 o'clock or it is 1 o'clock. Okay, so. I, and also, I don't know how the weather is going to be, too. Um but uh, regardless, I still feel like it's going to be a packed house. And then oh, overall, yeah. I think the Jets are just going to be not only pissed, but mad, not only mad at you know the outcome of uh, yesterday, but mad at themselves for letting that happen. Exactly. You know, Brandon Marshall had a quote after the game just saying that it wasn't on Fitz, or like not all of it's on Fitz, obviously, but you know, it's it's part of the veterans' uh, fault too, mm -hmm. and just as a whole the the team needs to kind of come together as a unit to bounce back. Um, but, uh, you know, to, I'm not trying to end my segment on, like, a negative note, so I will leave you guys with this. You know, this is week three. Right. You know, uh, we lost to a playoff team in their house with Ryan Fitzpatrick throwing six picks. Um, with an extra two more turnovers, they don't turn the ball over once. We don't have an offensive touchdown, and yet we lose by three scores. So it's week three. I expect to bounce back. Um, and, and another thing, too, I was actually talking to my man, Matt B., uh, over Twitter. And uh, we were just talking about, you know, the Jets uh, season and whatnot. And uh, I, I was actually looking at it, and we have a bunch of, you know, winnable games. And I'm not talking about, like, oh, Jets, Steelers, like, yeah, we're a good team. They're a good team. It's a winnable game. No, I'm talking about we're heavy favorites, in my opinion. You know, we got the Dolphins twice. We got the L.A. Rams, we got the Niners, we got the Browns, we got the Ravens. I think we have the Titans. So, I mean, those games, right the, the I just rattle them off, one, two, three, and it's like, those are all games that you can easily see the Jets winning. Yeah. So, by no means, we're, we're not out of it. Um, you know, a lot of teams went one and two yesterday. The Bengals lost, uh, Chargers lost. Um, you know, I could, I could go down the list um, yeah, on how many teams, how many, how many uh, teams are also one and two. And... Even if you know, even if you look at the three and O teams. I mean, three and O teams. We're not that far about the breaks. Yeah, we do have a tough schedule coming up, and you know, if we do go one and uh, five or in the in the stretch, you know, that could be some trouble. Um, but I'm just saying, let's just pump the brakes a little bit. There is still, you know, so many more weeks left in the. I, I mean, look, look at the uh, Chiefs last season. What did they start off, one and six? Yeah, and, something like that. And they made the playoffs? So, I mean, anything can really happen. Um, the Jets are a talented team. Jets are a smart team. Um, I'm hoping we definitely – you know, I, I hope we bounce back, but I definitely think we will. 
Um, I'm just hoping that they don't let us down. So yeah. that being said, I'll pass back. The other thing, man, the Jets, you know, despite the loss, they are a really well coached team. These guys have got discipline in their minds. Uh, Bowles is straightforward. He's not a BS type of guy. He's not going to uh, sit there and, and yell at the uh, reporters. He got mad. He got real mad. And we actually saw him actually uh, said a few curse words out uh, um, in this past press conference. So you know it got to him, man. And he's going to send that message very clear to the players. And the fans are going to be mad. So, yeah, expect expect the Jets to bounce back hard this week, man. Uh, like they did with Buffalo. You know, if they only lost by one to the Bengals and then they went to Buffalo and beat them the way they did, you know, minus the few blown coverages. <laughs> Home against Seattle, dude. One of the weaker offensive teams in the NFL. It's going to be a fight, man. We'll see what happens. The Jets have got to pick up the heads. Don't let them hang down too low, especially this early in the season. You've got all your fans counting on you, man. Don't let us down again. Thank you again, Jet Central, for uh, another great video, episode two of Jets Beat. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We will be doing a, a NFL week three in review, uh, I think, tomorrow with either uh, a couple of the guys. So <coughs> stay tuned for that, guys. Thanks for the view.